Hello and welcome back to Hardly Tech. Today we'll be comparing the RTX 2080 Super against the RTX 3060 Ti at 1440p with ray tracing. The specs for the 2080 Super are listed above, I'll give you just a moment to look that over. And here are the specs for the 3060 Ti. And here's a quick look at the system specs for today's test bench. Today's ray tracing games will be Dirt 5, Doom Eternal, Metro Exodus Enhanced, Resident Evil Village, and Cyberpunk 2077. Yeah, I know everything about Rally, because I do it for real. What? Driving my streetcar in someone's back road doesn't count? Whatever, Dirt 5. In Dirt 5, all settings are set to ultra high, ray trace shadows on, variable rate shading off. Here in Dirt 5, much like the 1080p ray tracing test, we're seeing that the 2080 Super and the 3060 Ti trade leads back and forth of about 2 to 4 frames per second for the most part. Sometimes a little higher, sometimes a little lower. I'm curious if the differences here are from changes in atmospheric effects, like the weather changing or the time of day changing, because overall they seem very close. I think if you're playing on a high refresh or variable refresh rate display, you'd have a pretty hard time telling the difference between these two cards. The only other difference to note here is that, similar to the 1080p test, the 2080 Super is utilizing about one extra gigabyte of system RAM and pulling about 10 watts less from the CPU. Wake up! He's sleeping! We're gonna die! I hurt myself. In Doom Eternal, we have DLSS off, all settings set to Ultra Nightmare, except texture pool size, which is set to Ultra, and resolution scaling is off.
Here in Doom Eternal, we can see about the same performance split that we saw at 1080p. In comparable scenes with explosions and gunfire and guts everywhere, we can see that the 3060 Ti maintains about a 5 to 10 FPS lead over the 2080 Super. In incomparable scenes, it seems that the 3060 Ti offers higher peaks, which is kind of nice. We also see that the system RAM usage has flopped. The 3060 Ti is utilizing that extra gigabyte this time. Does nobody else think it's weird that these people worship a giant fish? What's gotten into the Metro these days? Here in Metro Exodus, quality is set to extreme, motion blur low, ray tracing is set to ultra, DLSS off to start with, and variable rate shading is off. Hairworks, physics, tessellation are all on. In Metro Exodus, overall we can see that the 2080 Super offers about 3 to 5 frames per second extra performance over the 3060 Ti. Once again, the 2080 Super is using about an extra 700 megabytes of system RAM. I'm curious what's causing this. If anybody has any insight into this, please let me know. After turning DLSS on to quality for both cards, the 2080 Super's lead grows to about 5 to 7 frames per second. However, both cards are offering great performance here, and if you've got a variable refresh rate monitor, I doubt you'd ever notice the game dropping below 60 on either of these cards. What can I say about Resident Evil Village? Except that I'm liking it. <laughs> Settings in Resident Evil Village are all set to maximum. Variable rate shading is off, texture quality set to high, and film noise is off. In the village portion of Resident Evil Village, haha, <laughs> village, the 2080 Super and the 3060 Ti are effectively matched. There's basically no difference in performance here. It isn't until we enter Castle Dimitrescu that we really see a difference between these cards. On average, the 2080 Super maintains about a 3 to 5 frame per second lead in comparable scenes. I won't last until dinner. That's perfect. I'm thinking about getting metal legs. It's a risky operation, but it'll be worth it. Oh yeah, Cyberpunk. In Cyberpunk, all main settings are set to their maximum. Ray tracing options are on, of course. Lighting is set to ultra, and DLSS is set to balanced. At 1440p in Cyberpunk 2077, we're seeing about the same split that we did at 1080p. The 3060 Ti is maintaining about a 2 to 5 frame per second lead over the 2080 Super. We can see also that the 3060 Ti is using about an extra half gigabyte of system RAM once again. And there we have it. The 1440p ray tracing results are in, and it looks like the cards are fairly even when game testing is taken as a whole. 
There isn't much that I can say here that I haven't already said in the 1080p ray tracing review and in the rasterized performance review. It's a good card at a decent price, assuming you can get it at or near MSRP. Personally, I was hoping 1440p would cause a bit more of a difference between these cards, just to have the ability to say that there's a clear winner here. My assumption is that by now a lot of people already have a card that is at or near this performance level, and so it's kind of hard to recommend. But if you're at entry level, this is a great upgrade. The last testing suite for this card will be ray tracing at 4K. If 4K doesn't push these cards to their limits, then I don't know what will. If there's a specific test that you'd like to see done with either of these cards that I haven't covered previously, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you all for watching, I really appreciate it, and if you'd do me a kindness, on your way out, hit that like and subscribe all over that button. Your support really does help this channel grow and makes all the difference. Until the next video, bye for now.